In this example, I'll demonstrate how you evaluate a multi-task lifting work, um, lifting job. Uh, so the equation, as usual, you can we need to understand the single task application before we do the multi-task application because a lot of these calculations are the extension from the single task calculation. For example, the recommended lifting weight equation is basically same. We have to use that. So to understand, check that single task video. Um, what is different in multitask though is uh, how much is added when multiple activities are performed. So for example, this is taken from that same NIOSH manual that the NIOSH revised lifting equation, they think this is a warehouse example. Someone is um, taking water and then preparing water and then just carrying few, basically lifting few boxes. Now, one of the difference from the other example that I have shown um, than this one is this one says you don't need control at the destination. So those boxes, once they're prepared, it doesn't really matter how you drop them. You can simply just um, do whatever way you want. They should be okay. So significant control is not required unless some glass box trying to set somewhere. So anyway, this problem says significant control is not required. So we really don't have to calculate the values for the destination. So the only concern is stuff is the origin. So let that thing out of the picture, the destination is almost twice more calculation required because for all situation you have to do the both destination and the origin if the significant control is required at the destination. So this is the example task. You can also, um, I will post a link directly to this work task to the CDC website so you can um, see the manual where it was taken. And then some more um, numbers and definition and then um, I have extracted all of these values in Excel here and as you have seen how we have got these different multipliers for single task and you basically do the exact same way. So first we're gonna see how the lifting index recommended weight for single task. So the person is doing three different tasks, lifting a box A, box B, and box C. So there are three boxes like that. So for that three boxes, you know how to calculate the, this ST is added here because it just indicate the single task recommended weight limit. And this is also single task lifting index. So um, because you have multi-task and single task, previously you only have seen um, recommended lifting weight. There was no ST. So ST indicates single task. So we have done this calculation previously. We really, I'm not going to show here to understand how this calculated. You can check that single task example to come up at this point. For the multi-task though, the question is, how much is added because of this additional loading? So um, let's say you are um, uh, working on lifting on box and then a couple of more boxes. So it's not like just you lift one box. Uh, for example, you are working in a place, let's say UPS, FedEx place, where different types of boxes, different types of boxes, uh, different size, weight, shape comes. So they should be treated uh, so how this job should be analyzed? What we have to do in addition to the single task um, lifting index, we'll have to do everything as we have done in the single task. And then uh, the procedure is you will start with the worst job. So in this case, 1.62 lifting index was calculated for task B, box B. And then that is the worst because box A has just 1.42 and box C is just safe. It's not really uh, doing anything. If you consider just as a single task, C will not be a problem. So here is that. So the worst task is B. So you start with B. So you can write it here, that uh, value. And then you see how much is added because of the a and C and if you have more 
another job so you start with the worst one and then see how much effect that's why i define that as delta frequency independent lifting index for a and delta frequency independent lifting index for c and then you add all of them up to get the total um, lifting multi-complex lifting index so basically add all of them to get that now this is the equation you can see that equation for task two in this case b is our task one where we have started the worst task and let's say task two is a so for the task two all you have to do is frequency independent lifting index what that mean is when you let me calculate that then it will see what i'm talking about so the frequency independent lifting index this is equal to basically the frequency does not get added to it so you basically multiply all of them so i'm going to use the same function called product and then um, multiply all of these except the frequency multiplier so this is my frequency multiplier except that I will multiply everything so I will not add the frequency that's why it's called frequency independent lifting index so that's 20 sorry I actually calculate that's the weight recommended weight and then I think I need this space too so I can simply uh, copy this for C that and then I can calculate the frequency independent lifting index now because it's frequency independent you have to use the maximum weight instead of average weight so the in the problem it says that the maximum weight is not lifted all the time it's just a couple of times then somebody put some something very heavy in the box uh, and that lift is not so common so um, it, so to calculate the frequency independent lifting you cannot use the average so average would be for the just to calculate the single task lifting index uh, however the frequency independent lifting less will have to use the max so it's the max load that is handled divided by because it has nothing to do with frequency so that makes sense then divide by the frequency independent um, recommended lift lifting so here is the same thing so basically this divide by this one let's see if this is correct Oh, well, this multiplier is one, so it actually be so it's gonna be actually not that fifty on. That's the load constant. This is this load, the maximum load. So that's that. I don't know why I do that. I simply could copy that here. Anyway so what else to do so i have all these frequency independent lifting for a and also for b now let's calculate the things the amount added because of that adding of task a and adding up task b as you can see here this is the equation so the delta the difference the differential the additional effect on the body is calculated by the frequency independent lifting times the one divided by frequency multiplier of on on two minus frequency multiplier of one now you can see that the object on here is b let me just put that this is my one here and this is actually my number two object and this is considered as the number three here so in this case frequency one and two if i combine that so that's one and that's two so the combining that is three for three lift per minute if i look at the frequency multiplier you can see for three lift per minute less than 30 inches of vertical distance so that's 55 so let me type that as 55 and for on lift we already have that it's 65 i can go show again here so for two lifts for b it is 65 and that's 55 
So this value, this um, um, delta differential adding from task A is the frequency independent lifting times that. So it's going to be equal to the, this is the uh, frequency independent lifting times, oops, I don't know what I did. What is that equation? So here is that. Okay. So that's frequency independent lifting times parenthesis 1 divided by 0.55. That's the frequency multiplier for 3 lit per minute minus 1 divided by 0 0.65. 0 0.65 is the multiplier for 2 lifts per minute. So that is the addition from A. And then let's calculate the addition for C. So that's going to be uh, this frequency independent multi, uh, independent uh, lifting index times uh, then uh, this um, frequency you can see here uh, 1 divided by the frequency multiplier for task 1, 2, 3. So the 1, 2, 3 is this was our 1, so 2 plus 1 which is 3 plus 5 which is 8 so 8 lift per minute let's go check the value for 8 lift per minute so for 8 lift per minute it is point on 8 is the multiplier frequency multiplier so let's do 1 divided by 0.18 minus then uh, what was was it 55 minus 3 lift per minute let's go back and check how is the multiplier for 3 lift per minute for for 3 lift per minute is 0.55 so go back minus 1 divided by 0.55 for 3 lifts per minute so as you can see here if you just this is the combined composite that's what now shares composite lifting index which is really really bad anything over three is considered unsafe it's not ergonomic issue anymore it's a safety issue so the job should be immediately stopped it should be redesigned um, if you can see that task three which is c uh, task c has only 0.62 so it might look it is safe because it's less than one but when you combine them together you can see the combined effect from c is huge think about this you're uh, working just in regular basis you're okay with that lifting and suddenly your boss bringing a another job with it you know just a little bit addition will cause a huge problem so this multitask example is not just showing how to uh, work on how to calculate the the multitask lifting index or things like that in any ergonomic situation let's say someone is okay a to our job everything is going fine and is smooth and suddenly just a little bit added and then the worker get injured it might go even unsafe like in this situation this is a very good example from NIOSH.